Hey, how's it guys? In this tutorial, I'll show you how to achieve a file's revision history stored in Google Drive, and as well as how to store a file with Google Drive API using Python. All right, so uh, restoring a revision file is one of the things I think the Drive's documentation didn't document very well. So let me go into my VS Code. In this video, I'll show you two different things. Uh, the first task we're going to do is we are going to retrieve a file's revision history. And this will be revision. The second task is we're going to restore a file's previous version. All right, so here, uh, let's go into the documentation. All right, so we're going to use two methods. The first method is going to be the revisions that list method. The revision status method is going to uh, list out all the revision history of a file. And the second method, which is not listed on here, is going to be the method that we're going to use to download a file's previous version. All right, so here, uh, let's do this. So before we dive into the tutorial, I wrote a script called googleapis.py. And make sure that you download the source code in the description below. All right, so let me go ahead and uh, import the Google APIs library. And from the library, there's a function called create service. And this function will allow me to simplify the uh, Google API service instant creation. All right, so here, uh, let's do this. Let me create several variables to provide the required uh, information that we need to create a drive client instance. Right, so we need to provide a client file and it's going to be client-secret.json for my project. Then we need to provide the API name, API version. And it's going to be drive and v3 and the scopes. All right, so for the scopes, I'm going to uh, use drive scopes. And this will be googleapis.com A-U-T-H slash drive. Now let's go ahead and create the drive instance. Right, so we need to provide the client file, API name, API version, and the scopes. Now let me go ahead and run this code block. And it's going to prompt me to uh, choose my account. So I'm going to choose my account and click on events. Then click on this link to proceed. And here I'm going to grant permission to the project. All right, so once I have authenticated my account, I can close the tab. All right, so uh, let's see. I'm going to uh, use all my files. Let's use this one add to PyQtify notes file. All right, so if I look at the uh, version history, so this file has, let's see, has 14 different versions. All right, so I'm going to uh, open the file or preview the file. I need to grab the file ID. So I'm going to open the uh, window in a new tab. And on the new tab, it's going to give me the files ID. All right, so here I'm going to create a variable called file ID, and it's going to be the files ID. Now going back to the documentation, here we need to use revisions that list method to retrieve the uh, version history information. All right, so here I'm going to call the service object dot revisions dot list. And here we need to type the asset security in. If we look at the documentation or the syntax, we need to provide a file ID, which is a required field. Then we can specify the information we want to uh, retrieve, as well as how many items they want to return per page. And the default is 200, but the max item is 1000. And I also like to use 1000 as the page size. And if there are additional pages of uh, items that you need to achieve, then you're going to get a page token back. 
Alright, so here let's do this. I'm going to create a function. And I'll name the function get file revision history. And this function will take a file ID. And from revisions.list method, we're going to provide the file ID. And the value is going to be coming from the file ID argument. And I want to return everything. So I'm going to set the fields parameter to wildcard, meaning that I want to capture everything. And for the page size, let's set this to 1000. I'm going to name the output as response. All right, so from the response object, assuming that this code is successful, from the response object, we're going to get two keys, revisions and kind. And the revisions key is going to return uh, the revisions item in a list. All right, so this is going to be revisions. And you can get the information if we look at the uh, response sample. And I'll name the outputs revisions. And I also want to check if a page token is generated. And this will be next page token. All right, so here I'm going to insert a while loop while next page token exists. Then I want to uh, continue to make the request call. So I can grab this code block and I'll copy and paste. And here uh, inside the while loop uh, for the second list method, we need to set the page token parameter with the next page token value. And finally, I'm going to return the revisions list. All right, so uh, let me go ahead and create this function. And I'll move file ID variable below the function. Oh, so let me go back to the top. I want to import another uh, library. I want to import the pandas library. So that way when I uh, look at the information, I can view the revision history in a table format. All right, so here let's call the output's revision history. And we're going to call the function gets file revision history. And we're going to provide the file ID. And I'm going to create the revision history object. Oh, file ID is empty here. All right, so here if I print revision history object, and it's going to create a list. And I'm going to convert the list to a data frame object. And now export the output as a CSV file. And let's name the file revision history, giving the file ID. Dot CSV. Dot format, and this will be file ID. And I'm going to ignore the index. I'm going to go ahead and run these two lines. And if I go back to my uh, project folder, and here's the CSV file. All right, so if I look at uh, the output, I should expect uh, 14 revisions. And the earliest revision is going to be on the top, which is going to be the first row. And that's going to give us the revision history. And column B are the revision history ID. Now let's say I want to restore the first version of the file. All right, so here let me go ahead and grab the revision history ID. And for test number two, I'm going to go ahead and create the revision history ID variable. And here we already have the file ID variable created. 
Now going back to the top, if we want to restore a file in a Google Drive, from the Google API client dot HTTP library, here have a typo. This should be Google API client. We need to import the media IO base download class. All right, so going back to uh, task number two. All right, so here I'm going to make a request to get the media option. And this is the step that the documentation didn't explain very well. So here I'm going to reference revisions resource down to reference the get media method. And this is a method that wasn't lost on the documentation. All right, so I'm going to name the outputs media request. Inside the get media method, we are going to provide the file ID to the file ID parameter. Then we're going to provide the revision ID to the revision ID parameter. And this will be revision history ID in our case. All right, so if I create uh, the media request object, If I print the media request object type, and it's going to return as a HTTP request. And let me check if we're going to get a URI back. Okay, so this is going to be the endpoint that we're going to make a, a request call. So here we have the uh, request object created. Now we're going to download the file. And we can download the file by using the IO library. And this is a function called file IO. The first parameter is going to be the file name. And I guess I forgot to import the IO library. All right, so from the IO library, that file IO function, we want to name the file that I want to save. And let's name the file test notes the DOCM and that's the file extension. Yep, DOCM. And I want to write as binary. And I'll name the context manager as FH. Now we're going to create an instance of the media IO base download object. And we're going to provide the FH object as well as the media request object. Next, I'm going to create a tracker to figure out whether or not if the download is complete. All right, so here I'm going to say while done is false. I can simply say while not done. And I'm going to download all the chunks from the downloader object, that next chunk, and it's a method. Next, I'm going to print the progress. And I want to convert the progress to percentage. So I'm going to type 1000. Then I'm going to insert the percentage symbol. All right, so here, I, if I run this code block, let me put a fold on the left. All right, so it looks like the file is downloaded. And if I open the file, and I should expect that uh, this is going to be the first version of the original file. And I can verify the file by looking at the file size, and it's going to be 1.25 megabyte. First, the current file size is only 608 KB. All right, so this is going to be everything I'm going to cover in this video. And hopefully you guys found this video useful. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.